Bros. Hi guys, and welcome to the ZZ Will Show. We are in a different location because you know I can move about, you get what I'm saying? But today, the reason why we are in a special location is because we are talking to James. How are you? I'm golden, Zizi Bill. Oh, thank you. In this new location. I know. This is, I'm, I'm, do you know what, yeah? Can I just say something? You're extremely special. Because you know how many times different people have tried to get us to move? Oh, we can't come here, but can you do it in this location? And we're like, nah, sorry. Mm. You know, we have like a whole thing. It's a part of the set. Yeah. But for you, we've come here. See? Everything, you, you find everything with James Sandler. Just a little bit tweaked. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? okay. Just a little bit different. How are you? I'm really good. I'm golden. You know, we're, we're um, in a really special moment because we're, we're on the dawn of the release for my debut feature, The Harder They Fall. Yes, that's what I was so telling you. It's hard as hell. So, um, new film, mm -hmm. Harder They Fall. Harder They Fall. And sick. Like, I'm not a gory person. It's quite a lot of blood flying around. Mm -hmm. But it was enough for me not to be like oh my god i can't yeah. watch this anymore it was yeah. just a good balance just right and another thing that i really enjoyed about it was the humor mm -hmm. i the way i would be laughing at something and then the next thing that person's gone yes yeah. that's yeah. it <laughs> yeah it's crazy like, why how and was that your intentional yeah because the hard day four right is like for me you watch the hard day four it's like anyone can get it I right. can't really feel too safe with any any character. It's like the hood, and and the reason why you know there's parts of it that are really humorous and I mess around with humor. I grew up in Kilburn Lane, Harrow Road, West London, Mozart State. So as dire as it was, as like dangerous as it was was at times, it was always funny. Like all hoods, it's mad funny. You're laughing one minute, next minute you're running from the ops. Yeah, like yeah, it's, yeah. Just a, it's just the it's just the thing in humor is such a huge part of everything. We do before we started this interview. Me and you was cracking that joke. Hundred percent. Like I was, I was like, I was like, what? Don't take no shorts. But people need them up. So I keep everything that's that's in my personality uh, in that in that film. Mm -hmm. Where it goes mad, violent. Where it goes humorous. Where it goes dangerous. Where anyone can get it. Like everything that's a part of who I am as a human being yeah. is in the hard way for. You know what I mean? So this is your debut. Mm -hmm. Um, I read somewhere that there was. Because of the pandemic, you filming got stopped, and then yeah. it started again, and then even yeah. the cast changed and everything. Yeah. How was that for you? Because at, during this time, I think we're coming out of the end of it now. We can yeah. go to the cinema again, and we can enjoy films. Yeah. How was that for you, though, as as a director, as a creative? The the, the pandemic and not being able to work and do what you want. Well, here's the thing, because see, the difference between James Samuel and everyone else on the planet is James Samuel is actually the black god. Okay. So therefore. When we shut down in the pandemic, I was like, all right, cool. I'm a creative from the morning up, from the minute I wake up in the morning to the minute I go to sleep. As soon as my, I open my eyes, and I believe this is the same for everyone, mm -hmm. but I really take it as easy. As soon as I open my eyes, the Lord says, action, the world is mine. So when we shut down, right, we shut down the day before we were meant to start filming. It was nuts. Oh, no. We shut down, we were meant to start filming on a Friday, we shut down on a Thursday. And Idris came down with the coronavirus. Remember when he came down yeah, with the coronavirus? That was on, yeah. my, on my set, right? We, we, shut down, so we all had to quarantine. No one knew what COVID was. was. Yeah. No one knew what COVID-19 was. All I knew is COVID-19 is this new album in the record stores <laughs> that everyone's buying and no one wants to listen to. But everyone's buying this. Everyone's catching, catching um, uh, COVID. And then we were shut down for like four or five months. But because I'm a creative, I was like, I'm creating. So I went and shot a feature film on Instagram. I went on Instagram and if I don't know if you, you remember when like Jay Z came on Instagram live for the first time. I was gonna time. ask you that. Did you find the Ella aloe vera toilet? I oh. never found the aloe vera toilet paper. One of the niggas took it. But <laughs> but like so so what I'd done, I just did a murder mystery on Instagram and like everyone was commenting because they thought it was real. Like, I, I was gonna ask you that because I I rejogged my memory of it, the other, and I was like, "This has to be, this has to be fake. There's no way that this is real at but you all." See, because I'm not famous like that, it's easy. That's why I was the one that was attacking everyone. I called Ellen Pompeo first, and I was like, "Every time you see me wanting to cry, 
is because it will start to crash because I'm laughing. And then I know it's you, you stole my Adam Mirror toilet paper from the gold party. You stole it. It's not me, it's Jay Z. Yeah. And what she's doing is reeling off all of the guests, right? Yeah, and yeah, then yeah, the yeah. guy goes, Tiffany Haddish. She's like, what? And you wouldn't even come on a date with me, Tiffany? That's because your breath stink, Jane. It wasn't me that took your toilet paper, but you're from Compton. I'm from South Central. Then it goes to everyone, then it lands on Jay Z. Yeah. And Jay Z says, You find a killer of Rex Mills, you find your toilet paper. Yeah. What? You want your backpack, find a killer of Rex Mills. And all of a sudden, we're on a murder mystery. Like, I have to find Rex Mills. And in the end, tell me if I ain't the black god. Well, in I, the end, I introduced Rex Mills, played by Morgan Freeman himself. I am Rex Mills. You're Rex Mills. Rex Mills is all of us. What does he say? It's a bar I wrote one night. He says, um, Rex Mills is the inner strength we lose when we seek false validation through likes and follows. The whole aloe vera toilet paper is a metaphor right, okay. for how people um, use social media and how they lose themselves in social media and the thing they're trying to find. Just because there's aloe vera on it, it's still toilet paper. And you're trying to find like your, your identity through follows and likes. Right, that was always yeah. a G. Right. The hard they fall don't make James, James Samuel James Samuel. But I was I was James Sam when I came out of my mum's womb. Like we are who we are. We're strong. Humans, you know what I, mean? I was gonna say my favorite my favorite part of that was when uh, Jay Z was like, "You didn't look right." So wait, you didn't look right. You haven't wiped your bum yeah. since the gold party. Since the gold party. And I was just that was hilarious. But um, why did you choose to do a western? You know, when I was a kid, I used to I just love film, right? Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, I used to watch mad cowboy movies, right? And there was always some show or another on the reruns that your parents are watching yeah. in the background. And I just used to love the cowboy movies, man. And what happened was, the, although I loved, loved the movies, the way the, the viewpoint or the scope that they'll show us those movies, right, with was always narrow. It was just like, basically, you know, white male Hollywood yeah, 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 um, yeah. directors um, giving us these stories. So there was no space on either side to show what, what it was really like. If you're a woman in any of those movies, you're subservient. Yeah, yeah, if you're yeah. black or a person of color in any of those movies, you're treated as less um, less than, right? You're less than human and you're, you're subservient. And it's just basically the, the either side of this viewfinder, which is so narrow. And I got older, as I was growing up, I used to go to the library and just read books on who was the black people in the old west. I came across all of these wicked characters. Right. I'm like, man, when I make a movie, it's gonna be about all the other stuff we don't get to see. Powerful women, powerful men, people of color, and living in a, in a glorious superhero um, um, stature as, as, you know, as, they, as they were. Because I always, on my, I always talk about um, certain films and the way I thought it glorified and perpetuates certain narratives of black people, like gang culture, guns, drug yeah. life, all that type of thing. And I was watching it, I was watch when I was watching it, I thought, I really enjoy this, but am I being hypocritical? Because I'm enjoying this, which is still, it was still quite violent, the stupid mm -hmm. gangs and whatever, but I don't know why, I, is, do you think there's any difference between nowadays the kind of hood films that we always see that perpetuate the drugs and the gang life and whatever over a Western? Do you think there's any difference? Am I just... Well, it depends. Being no, you're not being hypocritical at all. I, I think it depends on the, on the movie. Right. Um, I think a lot of things are just exploitation. Yeah. Right? The exploitation. In, in, and people do it because it's easy to, to, to do. I remember I used to say to my friends, like, I used to get a video camera in the hood, and I'd go, okay, let's do some acting. And every single one of them, when I say action, the first thing they'll do is, where's my money? <laughs> I can everyone owes black people money all the time, but we're all broke. Right. Like, like really, yeah. where's my money? Is that yeah. the easiest script you can, you can make? So sometimes people just do it and it's just laziness, yeah. right? So it is exploitative. But as soon as you're telling a story about, about heart, like you've seen The Heart of mm. the whole thing without giving away any spoilers is a loop. And it's actually commentary on the, cycle, on the never ending cycle of violence, yeah. right? He's after this guy because he killed his parents and. You know, and that's kind happens. of how it is, like you said, on the roads. That's how it is on the yeah, road, yeah, right? Yeah. And so if you're doing something that's, that's true to life, it's not exploitative. Men's society is not exploitative. Boys in the Hood is not exploitative. But when you get like a thousand other, other um, movies, all these other films that came out on the heels of it, now, you, now you're just like making a buck right. off 
um, of our slaughter. Mm -hmm. And with the heart of me fall, it's talking about um, people in a particular time, like the Old West, they're all real characters that really existed. But it's a fictional, it's a fictional story. But those towns, those towns that they were building, it was all real. So there's so much like real um, information in there. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you watch Heart of Leaf, the Heart of Leaf Fall and you feel celebrated. It's like a celebration of, of our existence. Especially, they were. especially the black, the black women in like, Regina is like a mate. Badass. So, yo, I was watching it and I was thinking, I want to be like that. You know like, what I mean? The tone Thank in you, her Susie. voice, like she's so, you know do you know what I mean? It was just like, you know I'm a mean? boss, but I'm not, but I'm still feminine, exactly. but I'm not like, exactly. you know like, what I'm I mean? Still a, I'm still a woman. Yeah. I'm still a woman, and I'm more powerful than all of these, all of these men. Where's your boss? Yeah. My boss? <laughs> Clearly, you don't know me. When when the, when she stops the train, the guy gets off. Ain't no way to board a train, you damn stupid nick. Bam. Yeah. And my concern, Lincoln. We ain't no Lincoln. Yeah, she's it was. Boss. But one thing I have seen. So you mentioned just a minute ago that it's based off real characters. Mm -hmm. So obviously I'm always on the internet, yeah. scouring Twitter, mm -hmm. and there was a bit of kerfuffle. With Zassi. Yeah, with yeah being cast as uh, stagecoach Mary, Mary. and um, there was a lot of saying you know why because she was a darker skinned black woman. Exactly. Why was a lighter skinned woman cast in that role? In, as a darker skinned woman. As a darker skinned woman. And That's why they was upset with you, and they said we should ask you why that happened. Like a G. That's why it's good. So now I'm going to give you the bars. Go on, let's go. Life. You ready? I'm ready. Inhale. Do this. Stop. But if it's not good, I'm going to tell you. Stop. Exhale. Okay. I'm ready for this. Watch this. Everyone that's saying that is awesome. They're awesome. I hate the word. I hate the, the phrase woke Twitter. Mm -hmm. It's not woke Twitter. Don't call us woke. I don't know one black person whose last name is Twitter. It's not walk Twitter, it's black people shouting out at the top of their lungs because we want to have a voice and we want to be heard. Okay, but in the case of The Heart of Day Fall, none of them have seen the movie. Watch. It's a fictional tale, but I didn't cast anyone according to likeness. So what I ask for okay. is consistency. The real Rufus Buck was light-skinned. Okay and died at 18. Okay. Idris Elba is me and Zizi. Mm -hmm. He ain't like skin, and he's a grown man, and he's a, a brilliant actor, but he ain't 18. Right. The real Cherokee Bill, who Lakeith Stanfield played, could pass as white. Could pass as white. He had black, white in him, black in him, Native American. But he could pass as white if you see a picture of him. He doesn't look anything like Lakeith Stanfield. Also, Nat Love didn't know Rufus Buck. Rufus Buck didn't know Stage Church Mary. Stage Church Mary didn't know Bill Pickett. Bill Pickett didn't know. The whole, I do that with every single character. Now, what people think, because they haven't seen the movie, is it's a type of biopic. So they pick out Zarsi. Yeah. They go, hey, he can't do that. The real Stage Church Mary was a dark skinned black woman. Yeah. But they can also do that with Rufus Buck. He was a light skinned uh, black man. Cherokee Bill was what You can do that with every single character. The only reason they don't, and they're all black kings and queens that are talking about it. The only reason they don't is because they haven't seen the movie. But I'll say this, what they're doing is exactly what I wanted them to do. Not just with stage shots, right, yeah. but just talk about all of these characters. Because for years, Zizi, and allow me the latitude of completion. No, I know, I know. For years, everyone was telling me that none of these people existed. I made They Die by Dawn, a short film, 10 years ago. And they cast Erica Badu as stage coach Mary. Right. And everyone, mostly black people, told me there was no such person as stage coach Mary. That was Erica when I cast Erica. Right, right, right. right? Now it's Zarsi playing her. Now stage coach Mary sings in this movie, as, as you saw. Yeah, yeah. The real stage coach Mary didn't, didn't sing. Mm -hmm. Stage coach Mary in this film kills mad people and has a body count. The real stage coach Mary didn't kill mad people and have a body count. So I took that liberty of the likeness with everyone. And let me tell you something that's easy. Hollywood has done a proper number on us. They've they done, a, uh, not Hollywood now, but Hollywood then. They did a number on us, man. They made us hate ourselves. I'm, I'm Nigerian. I grew up being called spear chucker by my own people, which is why I grew up kind of tough, because I used to just bust yeah, heads. Yeah, like, yeah. Just, 
We are chucking you Afro chair. I said, Afro chair? What's the Afro chair? Because of the Tarzan movies. Oh my gosh. Right? Because of the Tarzan movies. They gave us the Tarzan movies and overnight we all hated ourselves. So now we have this complexionism thing going on. Every time I see like Drake being called emo or lights going, ah, they did a number on us, but we're doing it again. I would never play into those theories. When I wrote The Hard Day 4, I just literally cast it according to the characters, right. the, the story that I was telling. I didn't care that Rufus Buck uh, uh, got executed at 18 years old and was light-skinned. I want Idris Elba for this character. I wasn't looking at any of the um, complexions or, or um, physical likeness for any of the characters because it was a, it was a totally made-up story. I, I just wanted people to watch the movie and research them afterwards. But if you look at the Hard of the Fall, I mess around with everyone's. I didn't concentrate on anyone's complexion. I just wanted dope people for those for those particular roles, and everyone is black in this in this um it is in, in this movie. So beautiful to see. Yeah. Like, yeah. Do you know who else was really good and that like, who I loved? And I was just like, who is this guy? RJ. RJ Kyler. Oh, who played? And he played Jim. He played Jim Beckwith. Was wicked yo. man. So all of all the gun training, all yeah. of the how. Did, did they really have that experience? See, how no, that was all like, our, like everyone came and went to cowboy camp and then we shut down, it's a pandemic. Right. So everyone was literally in, we didn't shoot on sets, we shot on location. Mm. So everyone was literally in the Old West. We were all in the in the Old West just, just jamming. And RJ would be on ro roller skates, roller skating around New Mexico. Like then he'd be practicing his guns. He'd come to my house and practice his guns nonstop. Who was that? This guy just became a whiz. Uh, uh, I think the only person that could was a proper cowboy is Jonathan Majors. Okay, he's been right. riding since before. Oh, he, he was crazy. Um, he was wicked. Crazy. You see, when he gallops, he yes. get this guy gallops at full speed, no hands, shooting on target with no. So that's hands. him. That's him. No stunt. Yo, you're lying. No stunt man. Galloping full speed, bam, 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 bam. No hands. And I went to him afterwards. Yo, where are you? Where are you? It's easy, man. It was wicked. Like, I'll, I'll do this. When they, when they, when they, when, when I, because I never yell cut. Yeah, yeah, I go, yeah. if it gets me out, ah, 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 yo, yo, come. And he'll turn around and ride over. So, where did you learn to ride like that? And John Ford, I can't ride. Man, I love I can. Get yeah. And just ride up the tissue. It's hard. It's like, all of them were full on. Full on uh, cowboys by the time we finished it. Yeah. Wicked, man. Look, Wicked. I want to talk about the um, the music. There was a lot of reggae mm -hmm. in it. Um, like a G. Yeah, but you're not. Why? Tell me, because I, I was wondering why. Why so much? Why so much reggae? Because here's the thing. When you look at um, uh, Western, like I, I uh, composed the entire score for the movie and wrote and produced the whole soundtrack, right, for for the film. Mm -hmm. Like you know. Dreams is it's gonna be it's a little bit of a G. You know what I mean? No, no, no. Do you know what I? I've got to say, yeah. I said to my friend, I said, I want to hear this sound because this sound like is gonna be dumb. It's bonkers. It's bonkers. See, I put back. Have you seen the new trailer? Yeah. Um, Gorilla in the jungle. Right, 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 I don't see yeah. song. It's back row G. When you hear the full track of that particular song, there's two songs in the new trailer. I put back row G on the track. I don't know when this is coming out. So. Like, I, Go on. We can, any bits that come out, we, we go. But let's just say, back row G, right, is on the track. This is the first time I'm hearing it, so this is out before it's not Lenny Cat's out. out. It's alright, no, 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 Lenny Cat's out the back. Back row G, ain't even heard it. He's on the track with Jada Kiss, Conway the Machine from Griselda, mm -hmm. and Hove. Wow. Where is that going to happen unless the filmmaker and musician comes from Harrow Road? You were born and raised in London, yeah. then you, but you go from here to LA. Yeah. So how do you keep up with what's happening in London, like the bubbling, and then and LA, and then also we know that you introduced Rap Man to Jay Z. So how do you keep your ears to the to the ground over here, and what's the difference as well between London and LA for for creatives? Do you know what? Like for me, it's easy, right? Um, the whole I grew up on the street called Kilburn Lane, right? And as I told told raps, the ones on I think it was the day I took him to Jay's house, and we hadn't got to Jay's house yet, so he didn't know where he was going. He was like, how, how did you do it, man? How did you, how did you, I don't get it, because he moved me a couple of days in LA, and 
And I told him, like, look, man, what road did you grow up on? And he, he told me his road. Like, the whole world is that road. I grew up in Kilburn Lane. The whole world is Kilburn Lane. Every single person you're going to meet in your adult life, you met a version of, a version of when you was at school. The whole world is Kilburn Lane. You master your lane, you master the planet. And furthermore, we are kings and queens, ZZ. Why are we just restricted to one city? It makes no sense. Mm -hmm. The Lord gave us the airplane. I'm getting on a plane and I'm going all over the place to, to execute the plans of what it is I'm going to execute. I was on, I was on, I was on Kilburn Lane, walking on Kilburn Lane about 13 years ago. I was like, mm, I'm going to make a Western. I'm going to make a Western. I flew to Hollywood, <laughs> cooked up, cooked up. Cooked up like this, this actor, that person, and made the made they die by dawn. Came back to London years later. Okay, it's time for the holiday four. Flew to Hollywood. <laughs> I don't know why we regionalize ourselves. Right. Firstly, we're all from Africa. I'm just saying, black people. Yeah. We're all from Africa. Okay, and then we ended up over here in the West Indies, in the, in, the, in in America, and all over the place. But we, but the whole world. The whole world is, we're all, this, we're, we're all over the place and the whole world is ours. Like, why are we just restricting ourselves to Mozart State? Do you think it's harder, though, to, to make it over here than it is in, uh, like, America, LA? So, I used to do acting back in the day and um, I lived in LA for a little while because I just felt like opportunities here were limited, especially for black people when it mm -hmm. comes to acting. And I know a lot of British actors have gone over to yeah. America LA, and done really yeah, well. yeah, done really well. Yeah. And then, then there's that conversation now about you know American actors being upset with the mm. British yeah. actors. And then, have you ever felt that feeling as a British director being in that space? Like, why, what are you, why are you here? Kind of, why there's loads of us, so why you, why do you need to come over here and start? No, you know what? Not really, ZZ, because um, I think that a lot of times we take away. Um, you know, um, black people from all um, sides of the globe. I think a lot of times we take away from our own, our own power, mm. right? Like it is hard to, I think it's hard to make it anywhere. For every actor that makes it, there's a thousand that are just trying, man. Yeah. Are just working in Starbucks all over the world, not just in, in LA, like over here too. But we do take away from our own, own power because why do we, uh, not even as black people, but just as a, as a culture. Like, why do we need anyone for? With regards to, if if I want to do something, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. Right. I'm a holler at ZZ. I'm a holler at rap, raps. I found raps on YouTube, right? With everyone else. Right. I'm a holler at ZZ. I'm a, I call Jamal from SBTV. Hey yo, bring rap man to the gods. <laughs> you know those ones. Like I got you, Jay. I got you, Jay. <laughs> raps in an hour. <laughs> FaceTime. You're one of the gods, you're coming with us. But I'm gonna call you in a week. When I call, just answer the phone. You good? We go. And yo, rap, speak to my friend. Yo! My point is, the whole world is, is, is ours. And I think like, the harder it is with me, it was, technically it was hard to make this movie. Yeah, yeah. Super hard. Imagine. And then, we were given the first worldwide pandemic in 102 years. Mm. And at no point did I blink. Mm. It's easy, I'm still making this, this movie. Like, Look at what we've been through. Look at what we go through every day. Look at what you go through as a black woman. Look at how you just made your name on YouTube. I saw you sitting with Wiley, giving him the hardest time. But wait, it was genius. You were giving him the hardest time, but he was giving you the hardest time. Thank and then both of you were cooking back and forth like, oh, he's like brother and sister. That's like a genius way to deliver uh, an interview. You're one of the black gods. With, as hard as you've had it, as hard as you've had it, you're still here today making up your own name for yourself. Globally, right? Like the, I don't know, man. The, the world is ours, and the, and also the world is so small. Yes, now. it is. Oh, we can just get together, man. We can just shoot. We can, like like you call me, I call this person, that person, and we just shoot, and let's just make stuff, and let's create, and worry about all the rest of the stuff later. But I'm not waiting for anyone else to let me through the door. Right. I don't want to be in the game. I'm not from any industry. I'm from Mozart State. I'm from Kilman Lane. I ain't from any industry. I make my own industry. I just want to build. Because you are kind of like an all-rounder, you do music, the directing, which it, I felt like watching the film, like it was a music video and a film acting work all in one. Because sometimes, like you said, the, she would start singing randomly, and I grew up in musical theatre school, so it, to me it felt like a, 
it, it's not a musical, but it felt like it's musical. music driven. Yeah. Yes, so it, it was very yeah. music music driven. Yeah. So with that deliberate, you wanted to bring every aspect of your creative thing into this what into this one piece. Yeah, you know I mean, it's easy. I'm going to steal that bar. Stolen. I want to bring every aspect of my creative being into this one piece. My bars now. My <laughs> Can you just put like a little thing and then say like ZZ? Yeah, 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 like, yeah, 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 yeah. ZZ that's cool. says she made it up. It was me, <laughs> and that's exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to bring um, all of my all of my creativeness into into this beat. And I always tell people, you know, obey your crazy, right? Obey your crazy, man. You'll never be steered wrong if you listen to yourself. If you have an idea, like obey. If you want to. Uh, it's been here. When they go to the Trudy Smith scene, we see a blue lady right. come out of nowhere. They always ask, why? Why is she yes, blue? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why is she blue? Because she's blue. But why? Because she's blue. And she's just blue and she dances while Alice Smith is singing in the, in the, in the back. I think life is full of, um, of mu- life is full of music sequences every single day. Me and you be walking from here to Common Garden Station, we'll pass like three street musicians. Life is full of it's like the birds sing in, in melody. We talk in melody. So it, it's almost like I see um, I see music and I hear cinema, I hear film. And when I'm writing it, everything just one just bleeds in to the other. Yeah. That's why Jonathan Majors, like Nat Love, he walks up on Mary and you hear the score. It's a wicked piece of a movie. And you hear the score and you hear his voice. Away with the wind she goes. Away with the wind she goes. Then the music comes as her garden grows. Then I bring the camera around and you see it's him singing. Hold those flowers close. For away with the wind she goes. He's singing like one character orchestra playing. She wants to be back with information by sunup. Like it's just, and for me that's life. I'll be speaking to Zizi and I'll be like, Zizi, come with me. To the club, we can talk about why. Yeah. If you know him before you, I'm saying like life is music, and I just wanted to, to really give everyone the world that's in my that's in my brain. You know what I mean? No, I I thoroughly enjoyed. I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed watching it, um, and I watched it late at night as well. So I and I didn't fall asleep, which is that means that it was very I was tired as well, you. and I was literally like locked and glued to it. That's why you just come to the premiere. And one like, one last thing that I really enjoyed about it was the the times when you would like break the fourth wall kind of, and then you'd feel like sometimes you'd feel like it just was looking uh, into you, your soul. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yo, I was yeah. like, yo, that's yeah. that's intense. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I always want to, or, or when they're singing their chant, and and and, and, and Matt Love just looks in the camera in the distance. Yeah. <clears throat> then show the viewfinder. Now we're in Redwood. Idris is just looking into the camera, and you get all of these um, things. Like I love breaking the fourth wall, and also I believe when you're making a film, the camera is actually the storyteller. The camera is telling you the story. Right. So I never want to. I never want to just basically hit record or just say action. You always want to do something with the camera to make it speak to the audience in the most interesting way possible and sometimes you need your protagonist or your antagonist to look directly into into the camera and, and, and almost like almost like Shabba's Shabba is say I'm me man big dot is stinking Shabba <laughs> you know what I mean that's one of those oh but Taylor we have to wrap up now we have to wrap I know that's mad short man see when I, when I get to talking I know I know and you know what I was a little bit nervous today yeah I was nervous, and you know what's so mad? When you in, when we were talking, you said something, and I, my, uh, my cousin, she's been my, I'm telling you my life now, my cousin stayed over last, uh, so she was at my house this morning, and yeah. I was saying, oh, I'm a little bit nervous. She was like, why? And I was like, oh, you know, like, I've never really done somebody, you know, this big before or whatever, and it's like, it's, and I don't know, because yeah. you never know how creators are going to be. They're either going to be really talkative, yeah. or they're going to be, like, really recluse and kind yeah. of, you know, you're going to have to, like, pull out tea yeah. from them. So she was like, cuz. You've met someone like him before in your life, and you said that just earlier so in the in the yeah. in the interview. So when yeah. you said that, I was like, 
That's so wish that. Yeah. So you've probably met someone exactly like him. Yeah. So when you start talking, you'll see something. You'll, he'll remind you of someone. And totally. you'll just relax because you'll be like, oh, I know you. We've met before. Yeah, the, the first thing I said to you, I'm like, have we met before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Like, and, I, and, I, and it wasn't even that wily thing. But it's just, just, that, just that energy, man. Like We were somewhere before we were here. It's almost like, you know, we're, 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 we're just here trying to get to the nirvana of where we were before in a never ending loop, as it were. But never be nervous, man. You're a black god. I say that because I'm. I, I say that because I mean it, and I mean it when I say it. Like you're a black god, man. You're you're literally leading legions and making hundreds, of thousands of people, millions even, watch you, and watch what it is that's coming out of your mouth, and watch what it is that that you're that you're um saying, all stemming from a thought in your in your house. Like you're you're, you're queen. Like never be nervous for no man. In the words of Ian McKellen, it's that weakling superhero in X Men Three, which wasn't really a good X Men. You are a giant among insects. Don't let anybody tell you different. It's Black God season. Thank you. You know what I mean, season? I appreciate it. Oh, I talk a lot. Forgive me. No, I love it. This is, I love it. So, but, so the Hard Day 4, guys, you have to watch it. It's so, and you know me, I will tell you guys. I'd be like, mm, no. I've sat down with people before that, that I've done films and I've told them, I'm not being funny, but mm. what was going on there, I'm yeah. not for it. Yeah. So, I'm, it's a good film. Everyone needs to watch it. So Thank nice to see you. black people yeah, in a different man. light yeah. and just see us like in our greatness yeah, and celebrate it. Riding horses yeah. being just epic. Yeah, all complexions of us. And just just wicked to 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 I'll I'll end by saying this. When I was a kid, we saw like the reggae. Yeah. I used to hear that song, I'm broader than Broadway. Yes, I'm broad, I'm broad, I'm broader than Broadway. Still yali, yali, yali. When I was a kid, I used to hear like horses galloping. Still yali, 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 whoa. Sing, here I come. Man, I rebuilt that track, contacted Barrington Levy, put that thing, had Regina King in the middle of all her men galloping and had Barrington Levy sing on the score. There's not a movie harder than the harder they fall. Go see. On that note, we out.